Technically, it is possible to join stitches for working in the round right after we cast them on using the long tail tubular cast on. I did it a few times and I can say, yes, it is doable, but it's a pain, an extremely tedious task with high risk of twisting the cast on edge. I suggest we do it the easy way. And in this tutorial, I'll show you how it works. The cast on itself is no different than the long tail tubular cast on we use when we cast on stitches for a project worked back and forth. So leave a pretty long tail. It should be at least four times as long as the length of the future cast on edge. And then place that tail on your left thumb like this. Place the working yarn on your left index finger and then hold both strands with the other three fingers of your left hand like this. Just as we do when we, uh, when we use the regular long tail cast on. Then take one of the needles in your right hand and place that needle on top of the strand that is stretched between your thumb and index finger like this. Simply place it on top. And then move the needle around the strand to create a wrap. So that's basically just a loop. And this is our first stitch. So make sure that the yarn that comes from the thumb is closer to the tip of the needle. So the loop is made in such a way that the, this strand is closer to the tip of the needle. It is, it is important. So this is our first stitch and now we are ready to cast on more stitches. So first we uh, move the needle under the strand that comes from the index finger, like this. Then we get the strand that comes from the thumb and move the needle from under the strand that comes from the index finger, creating another stitch. The next step would be very similar to the previous one, the one that we just did, but we'll, we're gonna start from the other side, from this side. So we move the needle under the strand that comes from the thumb then we grab the strand that comes from the index finger and move it from under the strand that comes from the sun, creating another stitch. And now we just repeat these two steps. We alternate. First we go under the strand that comes from the index finger and then make a stitch this way. And then we go under the strand that comes from the thumb and make the stitch this way. And then we just keep going. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And keep going until you get the number of stitches that you need for your project. I'm going to cast on 16 stitches, so I'm going to do it a few more times. Normally, we use an even number of stitches to make one by one ribbing or two by two ribbing. So these instructions assume that the number of stitches will be even. Um, and um, for even number of stitches, we will stop after we make a stitch that, um, that is created by inserting the needle first under the strand that comes from the index finger like this. So let's see how many stitches I have so far. It's two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six. Perfect. So I have 16 stitches. I have all the stitches that I plan to cast on. And now, because these stitches are just wraps basically, right? So we have to twist the tail and the working yarn one more time, just like this, simple twist, to keep this last stitch from unraveling as we turn the work. That's right, we are not gonna work in the round yet. We are turning the work and this is the easy way that I was telling you about. So uh, we're gonna, uh, instead of uh, working with these flimsy wraps, we're gonna work two setup rows before we start working in the round. So the first setup row goes like this. Uh, we're gonna knit one stitch through the back loop and we're gonna slip one stitch with yarn in front. Like I said, I am assuming that you're using an even number of stitches. But if for some reason you're working on an odd number of stitches, then you won't start with the knit stitch. You would start with the purl. And then you would have just to be uh, to be careful so and look at your stitches. If you look at your stitches, you will see that every other stitch looks like a knit, just a twisted knit. It's not positioned in the correct way, but that's okay. And every other stitch looks like a purl. You can clearly see this bump. 
So if your number of stitches is an even number of stitches, you would start with a knit, just like I have uh, a knit stitch, the first stitch here on my needle. But if, like I said, for some reason you're working on an odd number of stitches, then be careful, you will most likely start with a purl and you will be purling that stitch. So we are doing the usual setup. We start with the knit stitch and we're going to work it through the back loop because uh, the stitch is not positioned correctly. And that's okay. We don't mind, right? We can knit it through the back loop, simply inserting the needle in a slightly different way. And then we simply knit it. Then bring the yarn to the front of the work and slip the next stitch purl-wise, just like this. And then repeat. Bring the yarn to the back, knit a stitch through the back loop. Bring the yarn to the front, slip a stitch. Knit through the back loop and slip. And keep going until you get to the last stitch of the row. Knit, slip, knit, and now we are um, at the last stitch of the row and this stitch is going to be a purl. This is our first setup row. Now turn your work. We are still not working in the round yet. We are still working back and forth. So turn your work. And then uh, one more row to do. In this row, we're going to knit one stitch at the usual way, at the classic way, and then slip one stitch with yarn in front of the work. So we knit one stitch, then bring the yarn to the front, slip, knit. This time we do it the usual way. We insert the needle from left to right. Knit, slip, and keep going until you come to the last stitch of the row. Knit, slip, knit, and then again we purl the last stitch. These are the two setup rows that we did to give some body to our project. So these stitches are not flimsy wraps that they used to be, right? We created one row basically worth of uh, uh, knitted fabric and this row will keep the stitches from falling apart and it will make it much easier for us to distribute the stitches between the needles and start working in the round and that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. I will use double pointed needles but you can use uh, one long circular needle, one short circular needle, two circular needles, whatever setup you like feel free to use it and uh, in this um, case you will divide stitches differently. I will divide them between four needles so I'm gonna take four stitches from the uh, back of this needle, one, two, three, four, move the stitches to the center of the needle and then take another needle and do basically the same thing, one, two, three, four, and then move them to the center and do it one more time. One, two, three, four. And now, very important thing is that now we can clearly see the edge. So when we arrange the stitches for working in the round, and it's always better to do it on a flat surface, so they're not hanging like this, they are actually staying put, and you can clearly see your edge. So now we can see that the edge is not twisted. This is very important in, um, when we work uh, in the round. It's very important to make sure that the edge is not twisted because this is one of the very few mistakes that we cannot fix without unraveling the work. And we don't want to unravel our work, right? We worked hard to get these stitches on. So we're gonna uh, keep working with them to make whatever project we have in mind. And that's, that's pretty much it. So now we simply start working in the round. I don't recommend doing anything fancy with these two stitches to kind of join stitches for working in the round, you know, passing them one over the other or whatnot, uh, because we want to keep the structure of the pattern and any uh, manipulation that we can, we can do with these stitches, it will disrupt the pattern. And we don't want to do that unless uh, we want somehow to make it a decorative look or whatever. But I would not suggest to do it and I would simply start working in the round in uh, one by one ribbing or you can use the same setup to start working in two by two ribbing. It's totally up to you. This cast on is very versatile and um, now that we worked through the cast on and the setup rows, we can simply 
focus on working on the project. And as we work for one, two, three, four, five, whatever rounds, we will see that our kaftan looks uh, quite nice. It is stretchy, it looks great, and it does form that beautiful um, look where stitch is kind of coming over the edge of the kaftan. See? So it's, it's quite nice. It's like a regular uh, tubular cast on and as you see this project like little swatch is worked in the round there is just one imperfection and this is this spot the gap this is where we join stitches for working in the round after working those setup rows and these setup rows they created a little body of fabric that is great it helped us a lot to uh, join stitches for working in the round without twisting the edge right but it also created this gap uh, it's not the end of the world. No, not at all. We can easily fix it by simply doing two overhand stitches. And here's how we're going to do it. As to when you can do it, it's totally up to you. You can do it right after you work a few rounds, or you can leave it until the project is finished and um, fix this gap when you are weaving in ends. Uh, so simply thread this tail into a wool needle. And then make sure you're looking at the right side of the work and find the stitch, the loop kind of, that is that forms the corner on the other side of the gap. See this yarn is at one side of the gap and we are looking at the other side of the gap. And we are looking at the very con uh, corner and this uh, strand is right here for me. See, it forms the corner. So we go front to back under that strand and pull the yarn through just like this see it already looks much better but we will do another stitch to fix this little hole it's not really a hole we can basically skip this the second step but it's better to make it as secure as we can right and to fix that little hole we, we need first to pull the work a bit so we so that we could see the wrong side of the work and then once we see the wrong side we are looking for two strands so see that's where we joined and that's basically where the gap is we are looking for the edge stitches in the first row so in that row that was the setup row so the edge stitch on this side would be this one and we are looking for the strand that is at the very very edge and then the edge stitch on this side will be this one so we simply insert the needle from right to left under these two legs and pull the yarn through. And that's it. That's all we need to do to fix this gap. And then while we have the tail on the, um, in the wool needle, we can simply weave it in, but I won't do it now just to save time. So here's how the edge looks. See, it's hardly to see once, especially once you block it, it will be really hard to see where this spot is. And that is amazing. So we created a lovely, stretchy, nice looking, perfect edging for a project worked in the round. The way we stitched the gap completely conceals the spot where stitches were joined for working in the round. Now, no one will ever know that we used the easy way of working the long tail tubular cast on in the round. To read this tutorial as a set of step-by-step -step photo instructions, follow the link in the description. To download it as a PDF, join the club or our community on Patreon. Thank you for watching this video and have a wonderful week. I'll see you in the next tutorial.